I learned about Good Samaritan Ministries 40 years ago this past June. I was working for our 12th and Hills Park and Recreation District here, teaching little kids how to play soccer. And one of my co-workers was involved in Good Samaritan Ministries. She introduced me to a, another friend and within a short period of time, I met Betty Mitchell, the founder. Um, I didn't wanna meet Betty to begin with because I'd heard stories. She was a tough lady. She challenged people. And I was concerned she would judge me, as a lot of people have judged me over the years. But she didn't. She fully accepted me, challenged me, stretched me. And I wanted to learn more. I wanted to be connected more with, with that type of, of a person and that type of an organization. So I volunteered helped to run a, a youth program for a number of years. And then in 1991, um, I lost my job and my sister-in-law was the assistant international director and she said, we need your help. So I came and helped. So talk a little bit about your role and your involvement now with the ministry. Now I, um, I'm in my second year as being the chairwoman of the board. So, um, God called me back into that role. So I've been on the board for uh, almost five years now and um, walk alongside Teresa and the staff and come in one morning a week and do volunteer counseling. Nice. How would you describe the vision or the mission or the heartbeat of Good Samaritan Ministries? Um, for me, Good Samaritan Ministries is about reaching out to the, the lonely, the poor, the brokenhearted, the throwaways the people that nobody wants, that people have rejected. And this is a place where, where people can come and be accepted and, and find family. That's good. How is the Lord using this ministry to help share the gospel? Let's talk about evangelism. Oh. You know, it's not the typical kind of evangelism you would think of because it's behind the doors in the counseling office. It's in the classes that we teach, the counselor training, the Bible classes, um, communications and boundaries. DBT or dialectic behavioral therapy, just a number of different classes that we have, the group therapies. Um, I, I ran a, a group for many years of, of victims and offenders all in the same group together. And one man uh, was searching and, and he would read about all sorts of religions. And one day his wife said, they're prophesizing you, they're, they're just trying to change you. And he said, oh, no, they're not. God's changing me. We prayed every, every group. And he would stand and he would hold hands with us and he would pray. And it changed his life. That's awesome. Talk about discipleship. How are you guys making disciples? What does that look like? Mm. You know, God calls us. God, God sends people in and, and he calls each one of us in different ways. And you know, to go and do likewise, as, as we train, wherever we go, we take the training with us. And then we train those that we come in contact with. Betty was teaching in her home. And people said, teach me. We had somebody who, who left the area and went to, to Walla Walla, Washington. Started the work, reaching out connecting people coming from around the world. Awesome. Talk about ways people can get involved with Good Samaritan Ministry. Well, there's so many different ways. Um, you know, we have local centers in Oregon, Washington. Um, we're, we're working to spread and, and uh, people can come in. They, they can come in for, for counseling, for classes. They can come in to volunteer. Um, we have an international work. They can be involved in that. Um, Talk about prayer support. How important is prayer support? Mm. Prayer support is, is the heartbeat. Prayer support is, is that piece, that, that the, the covering. I was just talking with a, a client yesterday morning who had been a, a missionary in Nigeria. 
And when she came home, she lost that covering. And when you travel internationally for work, uh, to, 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 do the, to reach the people, to, to share, um, when we send people out, we're praying ahead of time. We're covering them while they're there, and we're covering them a couple of months before they come home because the work doesn't stop. The, the conflicts within the spirit doesn't stop. And so we're helping this woman now to, to have that covering that she hasn't had and has felt so, so lowly. Talk about financial support. Mm. You know, as, as a ministry that operates on a donation, that's... <laughs> You, we, don't, we don't necessarily have the funds that people out in, in other organizations do because what do you have? The widow's might is so important. So even if you have $5 and you want to give $5, God's going to multiply that. So to, to, to give to an organization in Beaverton, Oregon, that goes around the world, that saves lives because you were there and you listened. You gave them a hearing. So many people don't have anyone. So you can give online. You can send us a, a, you know, different ways to, to send the funds, our, our website, our, our Facebook. Yeah. So why do you do what you do? Mm. When God calls you, uh, friends in Africa it just really shared many times, when he calls me, I will answer. I'll be working, working for my Lord. And so when, when God called me to Good Samaritan Ministries, um, previously I had had experiences in my own life, and I remember saying, if there's any time that I can help somebody to not go through what I did, I will do it. And where you send me, I will go. Amen. Final question. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us today about Good Samaritan Ministries? Good Samaritan Ministries has saved my life. Betty Mitchell, the founder, gives tough assignments, and she's taught us to give tough assignments. And in, um, I think it was 1981, she gave me an assignment. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to do it. Because the assignment she gave me was to go stay with a woman who was dying so the son and daughter-in-law could get away. I didn't second guess her. I said, okay. But then God spoke, and he said, She'll die while you're there. And I said, I'm not going. I'm not going. I went. Because the daughter-in-law called and we're friends and, and I went. And then it was probably 30 years later. The lesson learned then helped me to deal with something else that had gone on in the ministry and in my own life. So... Assignments, tough assignments are given. And sometimes people like me run away for a while. But when we follow that, it saves our lives. Yeah.